There's a variety of finishes you can get on your 3D printed chess pieces, like satin black, gloss black, transparent, and bone or ivory. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve all these different surface finishes. This is a Latvian style bishop, and it has an example of the semi-gloss black or satin black finish. This is the easiest one to do, so I'm going to show you this one first. This high gloss bishop has been coated with varnish to remove the layer lines. The layer lines are obscured by varnish and that's what gives it the smooth shiny finish. Here's the ecliptic style knight in clear resin. And I'm going to show you how you can uh, varnish your pieces to get them glossy like this. You don't need to sand your resin prints to get them glossy like this. You can use uh, polyurethane gloss varnish. And finally, this is the ivory style or bone style knight from the Staunton set. And this is achieved with oil paints. So let's look at how you get this satin black finish. You'll need a spray paint. This is Tamiya's semi-gloss black acrylic, but any, any rattle can acrylic spray paint will be fine. Brush painting won't give you the smooth surface, so it's better to use a spray. You need to seal your paint with varnish, so I'm using crystal clear uh, gloss finish. Uh, this one is quick drying and non-yellowing, which means the pieces don't change color as the varnish ages. If you have an airbrush, then you have more options for the kinds of paints you can use. I recommend lacquer paints. This is SMS's jet black gloss lacquer paint, but you can also use Tamiya's. Lacquer paint is essentially thin down nail polish, so it is very durable. It's great for chess pieces because it won't chip, it's uh, very strong. Make sure to spray it very thinly, use multiple coats, don't try to get one thick coat. This is SMS's Jet Black High Gloss Acrylic Lacquer. Although it's a high gloss, because the piece is still unvarnished and rough, um, you'll get a satin finish. Now lacquer paints use uh, lacquer thinner, um, which is quite expensive if you buy it in small pots like this. Um, since lacquer paint is basically nail polish, you can use nail polish remover which is acetone, to thin it. So it's much cheaper to buy a big bottle of acetone like this to thin your lacquer paints. After painting, you'll want to seal the paint with varnish, and I use this polyurethane gloss varnish from Vallejo. You can spray this through the airbrush. It is a little bit thick. If you want to thin it so that it uh, sprays more easily, you should thin it with isopropyl alcohol. This is the same isopropyl alcohol that you use to wash your 3D prints with. These Latvian style pieces have gold finials, so I'm going to paint them with the acrylic paints and then use gloss varnish to seal it. So this is Vallejo's Game Color, uh, Glorious Gold. Just need some water, tissue, and a couple of brushes. I always recommend using the largest brush possible when you're painting. Larger brushes don't leave brush marks. If you try to cover a large surface with a small brush, you get a lot of brush marks, a rough uneven surface. So it's better to use the big brush for as long as possible. So I'm going to paint most of this finial using this big brush and then switch to the smaller one when I need to paint very close to the black edge. Don't try to get an opaque covering on the first coat. 
use a little bit of water, thin the paint, and don't worry if the black shows through. It should take three coats to completely cover the piece and turn it gold. If you try to do it too quickly in, in fewer coats, it'll end up lumpy. So you can see it's not opaque yet. The black is still showing through, but that's fine. It's better to be thin and paint it two or three times. I'm switching to the smaller brush now to finish the edges. Now after the gold has dried, this is after I've applied three coats and the paint has dried, I'm then going to seal it with Vallejo Gloss Varnish. This is basically glossy acrylic paint with no pigment in it. Now you might find that this looks a little bluish when you first apply it. As it dries, the blue color will disappear and it will, it will become completely transparent. Here's how it looks when it's finished. You can see the spray paints give a very smooth, even finish. Next I'm going to show you how to get transparent resin. As you can see, this piece is quite clear. You can see through it. And it's very shiny. And this is how transparent resin prints look when they come straight off the printer and they've been washed and you'll notice it's not clear at all. It has a rough surface due to the uh, 30 micron pixels in the printer and the layer lines. If I soak it with water though, it becomes glossy and clear because the water coats the tiny imperfections in the surface and makes it smooth, which allows the light to travel through it. But as the water evaporates, it returns to its matte finish. So we need a liquid that will Coat the surface, but not evaporate and stay there, and that is polyurethane floor polish. So this is a clear oil-based polyurethane varnish. Now this is basically the same as the polyurethane gloss varnish that I sprayed on the previous piece. The only difference is this one is oil-based, which means it takes a little bit longer to dry, and it's a more glossy finish. So first let's remove the supports. Now the base of the piece will be rough and you'll want to sand this to make it smooth so that it looks clear when you put the felt on the bottom. However, there's no need to do this now because you're about to dip it in floor polish and that's going to make it even rougher. So I recommend sanding it after you finish this step. some blue tack to stick the piece on a wooden stick. Make sure it's secured well. You don't want the piece to fall off into the pot of floor polish.
Okay, you need to dunk the whole thing in the floor polish and then let it drip for a couple of minutes. Now when it comes out, turn it slowly to let it drip on all sides. It will take two or three minutes before it stops dripping. Once it's stopped dripping, you'll need to put it somewhere safe to dry. Um, I'm going to put mine on this piece of polystyrene foam. If you can cover it, that's, that's even better because it won't get dusty. It's going to take at least 24 hours to dry. Just to demonstrate it really, it's clear now, you can see right through it. And it will retain this glossy, transparent finish when the, when the floor polish is dried. Here's how it looks when the polish is dried. You'll notice these pieces have some bubbles inside them. Um, you may be able to prevent this by uh, increasing the retraction time as the build plate pulls up from the FEP, or by using the newer uh, NFEP or Teflon FEP films. Now to get this glossy finish on the Bishop, I did the same thing as the transparent piece. I dipped it in floor polish. So dip it first and then spray it with black paint. And afterwards, if you want, you can spray it with polish or dip it in floor polish again. Notice, however, that this floor polish obscures some of the details, the recesses between the lines and the collar. I've been smoothed out or blurred a little bit by the repeated application of floor polish. Here's a finished set of Staunton pieces. These were dipped in polish, then painted black, and then sprayed with varnish. Lastly, we'll look at how to do this ivory finish. So first, paint your piece with acrylic paint, pick a suitable color, a white or a cream. You can brush paint these because you don't need a smooth finish. You can also use traditional artist's acrylic, which are much thicker. Uh, you need to thin this. I recommend thinning with isopropyl alcohol. Thinning it with water tends to dry in a patchy surface with a patchy finish. If you thin it with alcohol, you get a more even spread. After the initial coat, we're going to stain it using oil paints. You'll need to dilute your oil paints with solvent like this. And the ratio is about 20 drops of solvent for one drop of oil paint. So it's extremely thin. You can see here that it's basically a glaze or a wash. There's, there's very little oil paint needed. Just apply the paint over the whole chest piece. Now, after you've coated the entire piece, take a soft sponge and remove some of the wash from the raised areas. I'm dipping the sponge in some solvent here so that it removes a little bit more of the paint. Adding solvent to the sponge uh, softens the edge and blurs it a little bit so you don't get a hard transition between the white areas and the stained areas. So you're actually going to remove most of the wash. You only want to leave it in the recesses.
You can dab a little bit of the stain back onto the white areas if you want to mix the color in. It looks good if it's uneven. Don't try to get a perfect finish with straight lines. Use the same process on the night. Again, this solution is 20 parts thinner to one part oil paint. Just apply it all over the entire chest piece. Make sure you get into all the recesses in the main. And then as before, take the makeup sponge and remove the wash from the raised areas. If the wash is pooling and creating parts that are too dark, just remove some of it. Now leave it for at least one day to dry and then spray it with varnish. I've used Army Painters Anti-Shine Matte Varnish. This gives a nice bone finish. And here's the whole set of Staunton pieces with this ivory treatment. See the texture of the 3D print actually helps to make the surface look rough and bone-like. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful and good luck painting and finishing your chess pieces.